Welcome to Shorty Super Coach and welcome to another player profile. We're going to knock off another requested player today, Mitch Duncan. Not a bad setting at Shorty's office today, just down at Fairhaven. It's a beautiful day. Shorty's going to catch some waves and he's off to Gold Coast tomorrow. So no complaints at Shorty's Superstars. But we'll move on to Mitch Duncan. And I did want to talk about him because I do think he's quite an interesting player. And, of course, I watch him pretty closely being a Geelong man. So last season, average 109.3, which really brings him into calculations because that's genuine premium numbers. And we, of course, know with the stars around him that he rarely, if ever, gets any attention. So certainly worth discussing a few points in regards to whether he is someone we can actually select as a bit of a POD premium or is it a bit too risky. Of course, I'll run through a few of his averages, 2013, 80.5, and then the breakout in 2014 with 100. Then 2015, just the 11 games with an injury, 91.4. Struggled to find the form as good as he would have liked in 2016, 92.3. And then it was no surprise to Cats fans that last year was a big season for him. I think averaging a touch under 110 maybe slightly exceeded expectation, but fantastic nonetheless. Now... What does Duncan bring to the table? Well, he's a beautiful ball user. Out of all the players in the Geelong side, if you're wanting one man to kick a goal or kick inside 50 or hit a target, it's Mitch Duncan. He's a beautiful user of the ball, smooth mover, and it's a myth that he's an outside player. He's certainly no Paddy Dangerfield. He's no inside beast, but he's far from just an outside player. Can easily win his own ball. By no means is he uh, an outside player, but does his best work on the outside with that damaging right boot. And I love his consistency. Now, of course, that 109.3 is a beautiful average, but looking at the numbers, some real good consistency and rarely gets shut down. Scores below the 85 mark. Well, he only had 85 and 70 in rounds 77 and 8, and 1400s and four scores in between 95 and 99. So extremely consistent, of course, the 21 matches, 14 were tons, and four of those seven that he didn't ton up, we're looking at 95 to 99 points. So more often than not, he's getting you 90 plus, and he is capable of going big. We saw quite a few 130s, 140s, and I loved his final series, 131, 144, and 110. So he does it in the big game. So that's what I really like. And looking statistically, Disposals was a big one. He just found more of the ball, a little bit more outside, but he did increase his contested pill. 22.9 overall possessions from 2016 up to 29.1 in 2017. And his tackle count, 4.6 up to 5.3. Not a big increase, but it's a big increase on the previous seasons. The last two years have been really good, doubling his tackle count previous to the rest of his career. And clearances, 2.3 up to 4.3. So... Again, underlining that he's far from just a guy who gets the handball. He does dish it out himself from the bottom of the pack as well. But $603,000 will be paying for him. For a bloke that we don't have the same confidence in as other guys who are around similar price that have done it time and time again. So is Mitch Duncan a beautiful POD, a lovely gem of a premium that your mate won't have? Or is 2017 going to prove to be his career best season when we look back on it? Is that going to be a slight outlier or, or has he peaked? Will he ever crack the 110 and go beyond it? Can he reproduce that? Of course, the ablet factor is something that has to be spoken about as well. I talked about it with Menengola and, of course, it affects Duncan as well. But the fact is Duncan is a midfielder. Menengola has played a bit forward. Duncan won't be going anywhere else. He is a genuine midfielder. The one thing that you might see drop off is he may become slightly more outside. He is capable of winning his own ball, which he showed last year, but by necessity and just team strengths, I think Gazza will clearly find himself in and around the stoppage a little bit more, and Duncan may just find himself the man down the pecking order, just one rung, you know, which sounds small and minor but sometimes it can mean you don't get a handball in the chain out of the clearance or you don't quite get that tackle because you're just a meter or two away from the clearance or you're a sweeper instead of being that second or third man in so it can be crucial clearly they'll look to utilize Duncan in a very similar position and I think he'll be extremely effective but personally I love him as a player but as a selection I think it's a tad risky. I, I wouldn't personally be going with him. 
I would have to say an average between 105 and 110 is very likely, but there is that case to mount that the ablet factor is slightly unknown on how it can affect. And the fact is, Duncan's previous three seasons have been 92, 91 and 100. Now, they're respectable without being premium numbers. So it wouldn't be crazy to think that he could drop back seven to eight points, but it also wouldn't be ludicrous to make an argument that he could go 110. Now, of course, you're going to have to make your own decision on that, but I feel when we're spending 600K and that's even a conversation, then that's a little bit risky. I, I certainly know when I'm looking to spend 600,000 on my field, I want there to be as little questions as possible. The only question you really want, is he going to average 110 or 120? You know, how high can this guy go? But I know week in, week out, year on year, this man is producing big numbers. There's no real risk barring unlucky injury. So I'm a huge fan of Duncan. There's no doubt about it. He brings a lot to the Geelong Footy Club, a brilliant ball user in his prime, big game player, not a one-trick pony in terms of contested possessions or outside pill. He does it all. And, of course, last season was the best of the best in terms of his career. But backing it up, that ablet factor it is intriguing because I think we do expect, if you want to look at Geelong's best midfielders, Dangerfield, Ablett, Selwood, Duncan. And Duncan is in that category. I mean, he's not an absolute superstar like them, but he's a genuine A grader. He's elite. He's not done it a body of work like those others, but he's well on the way and a bit younger than them. So I think he's warranted to be in that chat. What I think we'll see is Dangerfield and Ablett rotating forward to some extent. Of course, they'll be in the midfield at the same time in, in certain situations. But I think Selwood and Duncan will hold up most of the midfield for most of the time. It will just be dependent on when they do look to throw all of them in there where that then places Duncan. And that might only be for 10 to 15 minutes per game. You never know, it's hard to tell with rotations and things, but that 10 to 15 minutes might be, you know, a period last year, if you want to take random 15 minute periods. Last year, it might have seen him score 18 to 20 points. This year, being a slight bit away from the stoppage or playing a slightly different role, or he's not right at the base of the pack, that 15 minute period that is now changed because of the inclusion of Ablett, Maybe he's scoring 10 to 12 points, 12 to 14 points. Now, that sounds like we're picking at hairs a little bit, but that is how it all works. I mean, that could be four to six points difference. That might be the slight effect Gaz has. He might average 105. You know, that, that's my prediction that it's probably the range, if I'm talking ranges, 105 to 110. And if I'm really honing in, I'm thinking on the lower spectrum of that range. So still a very good season to come for Duncan, I believe. Whether it's absolute premium, I'm not sure. I think it'll be extremely good. Whether we should be paying that sort of coin, I'm not so sure. I think there's some really good value players that are extremely reliable around that price range, even a bit cheaper. And if you want to go a slightly bit up, there's some warriors that have served us well for years and years that I think we know what we're going to get. And when you're spending that coin, you need to know what you're going to get. So thanks to whoever did request that one i remember seeing in the comments and, and saying that i will get around to that so hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this one and feel free to give another request my way as well and look i'll uh, endeavor to have some content over the weekend i can't guarantee it. it'll it'll depend if i can get around to it later tonight and schedule it for the weekend but nonetheless i'll see you guys soon and thanks for tuning in once more subscribe to the channel like the video give us a comment and i'll chat to you soon cheers